Hi you guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna be having a sort of an episode of Hens in the Wild. We're mostly gonna be taking a look at the page called Network Marketing Girls. This seems to be a page where somebody puts together content for network marketing hens to post in their stories. Wow, that was a doozy. I made this smoothie with frozen berries and chia seeds. Oh God, and coconut water. So this first one says, there's nothing wrong with loving your nine to five job, but how incredible is it that it doesn't need to be your only option anymore? I don't think nine to fives are really ever our only option. So let's jot that down. How incredible is it that you can start a side business for a low cost that could potentially become another full-time income? Aren't you excited guys that now, never seen before, you can make two full-time incomes. You can do that by stretching yourself extremely thin, which a lot of people have to do right now because of the time, because of the I word inflation, because of the cost of eggs. Oh, it's funny because the chia seeds are starting to coagulate with everything. It's like, you see that? starting to get jiggly. I don't want to dump it on my computer, but hopefully you guys saw the jiggle. Part of one of the aspects that attracts people to MLMs is the fact that they feel like they can start their own business, which it's not, but you know, nevertheless, they can start their own business for a low startup cost versus the thousands and twenties of tens of thousands that you can have to spend to start a real business, which isn't even the case, but that's what network marketers want you to believe. The caption says, 10 years ago, I started my network marketing journey with a 50 euro investment. Within six months, I was matching my corporate salary. That's when I found out I was pregnant and stepped away from my nine to five. And the following year, I was earning six figures around caring for my baby. To be honest, I didn't love my day job, but I remember thinking none of my friends did either. So it felt pretty normal. It's okay to not love your job. Okay, a lot of people's jobs are just there to make money. It's almost like you don't have to monetize the thing you love. If you can and you still enjoy it at the end of the day and you love that for yourself, I love that for you too. But a lot of people don't. I don't think it's mentioned enough. But you don't have to go full time in network marketing to be considered a success. If you're lucky enough to enjoy your job, do both. They love saying that just so there's a little less pressure for people to not feel like they have to quit their career and make this their career. But we don't see those people talking about it on trainings. Like when I was in at works, they had something called the show me the money team call. And so everyone would like call some number and they just like talk at you for however long, like 20 minutes, I think it was. And nobody's going to get on those calls and it works and be like, oh yeah, I just do this as you know, more of like a hobby like 300 bucks a month and that's where I'm good at. That's just what I'm gonna keep doing. No, it's always they caught the vision, they learned they wanted more, they opened their eyes to what this business could do for them. The sun is so bright in my eyes right now. And if you're not happy in your current job, why not look at this opportunity to give you options? Use your income to invest in yourself and your future. Find what you love to do and do more of that. Find what works for you. Success looks different for us all. It's funny that whoever, is running this page just thinks that they just like these are never heard before concepts and that people are just like gonna have their mind blown and inspire the masses when they share this on their stories like, who's getting inspired by this are you inspired i'm not i feel like we've heard this 50 times before are you ready for this comment guys buckle up for someone who preaches manifesting, you should really try manifesting some original content instead of copying other people's word for word and not crediting them. That is pretty funny. But most of the comments on here are just like people agreeing with what she said. And I kind of wish that the person who called her out for allegedly, apparently, maybe stealing other people's content and taking it as their own, I think that they should have linked the person who was doing it so that that person can see that their content is being stolen. Not that the, these are anybody's original ideas, but if they took it word for word, why not just like share it from the original creator? I feel like it's not that big of a deal. Um, the next one says, is it just me? The more someone posts about how much money they have and how financially free they are, the more I think they're talking absolute shit. P.S. 
Your customers and team members don't want to see this either. Your content should be what you can do for them, not what they can have done for you. Um, if my hair looks crazy, it's because I wasn't about to uh, redo it. Okay. I put these weird lopsided buns in last night and I left them that way. And I'm guessing this person is trying to be like the new no shame sales game by like going against the grain in multi-level marketing. Cause she's saying you need to stop posting so much about the money and how you can buy things like money, money, money. Makes you sound greedy. That sounds so scammy and I would never do that because I actually work my MLM business differently. And the caption says, I refuse to believe I'm the only person who eye rolls at these posts. I mean, I roll, I roll at like most of them because they're MLM posts. And some of them are like massive income claims. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Do the Kardashians need to tell you they're financially free? Or is their content slash lifestyle speaking for itself? Well, I mean, there's plenty of buzz around how much they make, so... Uh, I, I don't know if they pay to have that put out there and whatnot. I've heard allegedly that they, you know, will pay for paparazzi and other celebrities do it too. I don't really care about that. But why would they don't need to tell me that they're financially free? And ironically enough, neither does anybody else. Because it's like mo most people who aren't in MLMs don't feel the need to tell people. Just go walking around talking about their financial situation and trying to get other people to do the same. That's reserved for network marketing hands. And part of the thinking that goes behind talking about your financial freedom on social media is that it's inspiring people to join your team and do the same thing. But she's so different because she doesn't want people doing that because it looks kind of scammy. I have discernment about who you follow online and who, you're, and who you allow yourself to be. Uh-huh. Someone said the quiet part out loud. People buy into the lifestyle though, every time. Sell the dream. I agree. Insecurity is loud, confidence is quiet. I get why people post about their freedom, but I think it tends to make you look less relatable if you're trying to attract people who don't possess that freedom already. Yes, like one of the crypto queens I react to on this channel and on so many other channels too, she talks a lot, about, a, a lot about numbers that most people can't relate to and it's not even inspiring when they can't conceptualize what that amount of money looks like. This next one says, some people are a little too vocal about their business goals and it's exactly what's hindering their growth. Let me explain. And this person's cool, relatable queen because they cuss. I think a lot of times people do that just to be relatable. Like if you don't cuss, don't. <laughs> think about the products you sell and the customers you have slash customers you are wanting to attract into your business. Do any of these customers give us about how much money you wanna make this year? No, no they don't. Yeah, I do agree with that part there because I don't like seeing people be like, I, my goal is to get the 30,000 in sales this month. Okay, you sound, it sounds greedy, it sounds icky. It, it, it seems very like pressury for people to directly financially get you involved in something and that's not so comfortable with me. Now think about your team members. Chances are you have a real variety of people, some who have been with you a while and some that are new. Most are probably new because it's it's hard to keep people at MLMs around. Those who have been with you a while are either really inspired about your goals because you're paving the way and they want to reach them with you or they're pissed off because they're really struggling and you're bragging their perception not mine about the money you're going to make isn't helping them they feel used uncared for and they lose interest they quit why are they going to work hard for your goals exactly and that's the problem with multi-level marketing is that they are working hard for your goals you're just making it seem like it's their goals and then you have your new team members who are getting serious cult vibes because they're wondering why everyone is all over your post with the insert flames emoji, and they can't see value of what you're giving back. Well, that's usually because of things like post ladders or hype ladders, whatever you wanna call them, where you link your post, and then everyone who's in that post thing does the same thing. Please let me know if this is resonating because I see it so often, and I'm sure I've been guilty of it myself in the past too, but it can really be hindering your growth. Well, yeah, because it's not genuine interaction, and people aren't dumb. They they can see that. I'm not the only person who likes to snoop on the internet. 
Do you see Oprah bragging about how much she's making or Tony Robbins? I don't know because I don't care about either of those two people. Um, Tony Robbins, I did do a shallow dive on him and it just got ickier the more I found. So maybe I care a little bit, but not about their money really. No, because they're servant leaders and they show up for their communities. Okay, I don't know about Oprah, but Tony Robbins, I'm getting cold because of this smoothie, but Tony Robbins being a servant anything, yeah, I'm gonna go with no right there. Okay, this isn't like a Tony Robbins hate channel, but I'm not the biggest fan. I'm not really the biggest fan of any motivational speaker, so. Take note, ask yourself how you can show up for your audience, your team members, and give genuine value. Well, you can't do that because at the end of the day, the goal is to get people involved in your MLM. So there's nothing genuine about that. Unless you're openly saying that, then it would be clear as day and people can proceed and do whatever they like. Make this all about them and you'll only see growth. Mm, that sounds really nice, but what they actually meant to say is you need to get more personal so you can manipulate these people. That's what it means. It's easy to get caught up in the hype of celebrating your wins and sharing the big picture, but maybe keep some of it for your team groups and your private leadership chats. Yeah, there was a lot of people who promoted in Monet last month, so at the end of February. I, I think it was, right? Do they promote at the end of the month or the beginning of the next month? I don't know. From a lot of the top boss babes, and they constantly posting the same things about the same people all over the shorts. So you're like tapping through and it's literally just screenshots of someone else's post that got screenshotted and posted by like 20 other people and then reposted by the person who was tagged in it or originally posted. Too much, too much. Tapping through, boring, boo, throwing tomatoes. I ranked to the top of my company in just 11 months whilst pregnant and nobody in my team knew I was building towards it. And you're not gonna get a prize for that either. Like no one's going to clap for you. To be clear, I wasn't pregnant for 11 months, even though it certainly felt like it. Well, yeah, because it's closer to nine months. I mean, because it's closer to 10 months. So it's how far off is it really? I hit the top four positions one after another in just seven weeks. Yep. Business quadrupled in seven weeks and became the fastest person in my company to make 1 million euros in personal commissions. I'm not telling you that to show off. I'm sorry. Didn't we just see a post about not talking up about this part because you think people sound like, because the more people talk about it, the more they sound like they're full shit. I'm a hypocrite on my channel too, so it's fine. But we're still gonna point it out. But to show you, I'm not telling you that to show off, but to show you what's possible. If you put your people's wants and needs before your own, no, you're not putting other people's wants and needs before your own. You're getting new customers. You're placing them under other people who may or may not be working. And that's funneling up. And then you're teaching other people how to manipulate other people to do the same so you could do the same in other areas of your alleged pyramid scheme. I was very aware of the numbers and productivity within my organization, within your pyramid. Within your pyramid. But I didn't want it to be about me. I'd share stats on sales that day or if we had an incredible week. I'd celebrate the team from people making their first ever sale to best weeks and months. Publicly or like just within your team page? Because sharing it public would be strange. And when I did hit a new rank level, I thanked them all for changing my life. That sounds really weird. The promotions drove momentum. Well, no sh That's how it works. That's the idea. We celebrated one another and being part of the whole journey, they could see what was possible for them too, which inevitably is exactly what happened. If you help enough people get what they want, you can have everything you want. And she's quoting Jim Rohn, who is one of the motiv motivational speakers I used to listen to during one of my nanny jobs when one of my tasks was that the family wanted me to steam up their floors, so I would. And I would play a uh, motivational speaker video. So I had something to listen to while I was doing that other than Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Okay. So I would play that and I would get so motivated to steam up those floors and clean off marker. I didn't get more motivated to work my MLM though. Oddly enough, it's almost like doing the work in the MLM was so unrewarding in every single way that I'd rather steam up the floors. 
If sales makes you feel tacky, it's not us, it's you. What? <laughs> Let's read the caption because I'm not quite sure what she's trying to say here. Sales is simply offering consumers a product or service that either solves a problem or fulfills a need they have. Yes, but no one needs an MLM or a solution that MLMs offer because there's nothing exclusive or special about it in general. You can go find it anywhere, probably more easily accessible too. It's very much a win-win. No, it's not. Sales is not being in an MLM. Sales can be fun. There's a bit of a learning curve, sure. But once you've nailed it, sales becomes a skill you have for life. That's true, I'm sure. I'm not good at it, but you know, other people are. Did you know in my previous life, I I was a corporate sales manager and trainer. They paired my 10 plus years of network marketing experience and the multiple millions my team had produced I know a thing or two about this topic. I'm putting together a masterclass of how to sell when you hate selling, but it's only going to be available to my newsletter community. This is your reminders. Oh my God. So this is a coach coaching coaches how to coach. That's what it sounds like. So if sales makes you feel tacky, it's not us, it's you. What does that mean? Can someone help me? Because I get so lost with what people mean by... What am I supposed to get from this? If sales makes you feel tacky. So if sales make me feel tacky, it's not MLMers, it's me. If I think they're tacky, is that what they're saying? This is your Friday reminder to do your follow-ups from the week. Yep, follow-up Friday, that was the thing for us too. And if you don't have anyone to follow up with, you're not doing enough of what's actually going to grow your business. So what this meant, and it works, was you weren't adding enough people every single day You weren't messaging new people. You weren't interacting consistently. You weren't posting engage-worthy content consistently. And I could be doing this anyway and still not really have anybody to follow up with in the way they mean. And the way they mean is following up with people who said they were going to buy on a certain day. And like people should have the freedom to buy things when they want to buy things without like the pressure of some sort of imaginary timetable. Like the sale isn't running out in MLMs typically. Like you can get their personal discount any damn day of the week. Spending all day creating reels is fun, but being busy and being productive in your business are not the same thing. Yeah, I guess. And until you have a certain amount of followers, I think it's 10K on Instagram. You're not even making money directly from Instagram for making a bunch of reels. So if you enjoy making them for fun, go forth, do great things. Um, If you're doing them because you think it'll help you make money in an MLM, yeah, slim to none chance of that happening. Slim to none. Because you have to make so many that are not business related for the ones that are business related to get any traction. And that's a lot of work for free because Monate is not going to pay you from a Monate, from a reel you make about Monate. Like that's not how that works. You're getting paid for transactions happening from Monate. Giving some tough love today because I hate to see people get so busy chasing likes and the illusion of fame when it doesn't always help you grow your business. Yeah, it really doesn't. Sometimes it is a good way to gauge if we think people may be lying or not. Like if they're saying they make a lot of money, but they have two likes on a post, I'm gonna go with probably not because their engagement sucks. Use these tools to help you grow your audience. Sure, but don't forget to do these income producing activities too. They're not the sexy ones that will require a different type of motivation to get done. If you got into the habit of speaking to people every day, your business will look completely different in 12 months time. Yet you will have wasted a lot more time that you could have made working at Publix. I'm like the spokesperson for Publix, but I, I've always had good uh, experiences with people who work there. Like everyone just seems so happy and it's such a clean store and I just love it. They have crunchy options. It's nice. It's pricey though. It's so pricey. Three people a day equals 90 people in 30 days. No shit, Sherlock. That doesn't mean that they're going to join your MLM or become a customer. It, like I said in my other videos, I had to talk to thousands of people. For most of them, I would go as far as saying 98% of them, at no fault of my own, did not join my business or buy my products. And I message thousands of people in a day sometimes. No, that's not a joke. Um, She does some more math. I'm not going to bother with that. Make these your non-negotiables and you will never regret it. 
Even as I write this, I can guarantee you most people won't do it. So if you'll have the competitive advantage, yeah, this totally would have motivated me when I was in works. I'd be like, oh, I'm going to do the 10 in a day, but I would do way more than 10. I would do like hundreds of thousands, H hundreds of thousands, hundreds, two thousands with my three Instagrams. It doesn't matter who you are, where you're from or what you look like. You can always outwork someone else. Do you agree? All right, that is all I have for you guys today. Um, let me know down below if you want me to do more about this page. It didn't seem like the most problematic because a lot of the ideas are not original, but I do find it funny that there are pages just for these scammers to go post content on their stories from. <laughs> it does give me a little chuckle. It's like the echo chamber for them and they can just go directly to the source. Uh, if you like this video, give it a little like see poo If you have commentary to share with the class, leave it down below. And if you super like this video, give it a share, share it with your besties and make sure you are subscribed so you get to see all of my videos. Thank you guys again and I will see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.